go to there and go to Twitch. We've got that there. That's all good. I'm streaming and recording. That's all good. That's where I am. That's where I look down to make you look down the slides. All good. Um, and I'll just go to here and go present this interview. Um, partly I do that because it does give me windows. Um, so I don't actually need that bit. But by doing that, and then when I come over to here, I'm able to bring the Twitch chat up here and make this come out of full screen, whack it over the side, thin it down to give me my Twitch stream. Yeah, it's about right. Okay, so um, good evening. Um, so, um, hopefully some of you are following me on Twitch and on Discord. I will just share my screen on Discord so the Discord um, followers are able to also sh share screen and I'll share that one and go live. Okay, so, um, the plan is here. Um, oh, my Twitch was... Did I, did I give you the wrong Twitch stream? I'm terribly sorry if I gave you the wrong Twitch stream. Um, it is that I didn't give you the right Twitch stream. Um, I must have messed up the spelling somehow. Um, so I'm I'm live on uh, Discord as well because sometimes my Twitch transcoder um, I don't get one. Um, actually most of the time I don't get a Twitch transcoder, which means you guys um, have to have very good internet uh, to actually get my full resolution. Whereas in Discord, it's it's um, a lower sample rate, so you can actually still see me reasonably well. Okay, so we'll switch back to the presentation. And I'll actually bring up the chat and then go back to the presentation. So we've got the chat there. So if you want to live chat me, I will go and check my um, Discord chat occasionally. But if you've got comments on Twitch, just fly them over there. And I'll be able to respond to them. Okay, so um, yes, this will be somewhat unusual for you. Um, my name's Simon McCallum. Um, I was the person who created this this game development course, um, ooh, 2009. So yeah, um, 11 years ago. I don't know. Yeah, I suppose 11 years ago. So I created this course. Um, and I'd been teaching game development in New Zealand uh, for three years before I came to Norway, worked commercially as a game developer, um, and then uh, worked in Headmark and then came to Jurvik. So I was in Jurvik for nine years, and I've now been back in New Zealand for two. Uh, but the university decided to keep me on to, to help to teach remotely. Um, and so that's why with COVID, um, you guys have decided to keep me teaching remotely for another couple of years um, just to get you over the hump uh, until you get all of the new staff on board. Okay, so um, as I said, I'm, I'm a New Zealander, which is my slightly unusual accent. Uh, if you have any problems with my accent, um, one of the advantages of recording all of this is you can go back over it later and slow me down so that I talk more like a normal English speaker and so that you will be able to hear me more clearly. Now, I could give all of my lectures at this speed. However, I find that this is not conducive to learning because it feels too slow. So I won't speak at that speed, I will speak at my normal speed and hopefully you guys can, can cope. Um, I When I gave some talks to America they couldn't cope with that speed of talking so um, yeah. <laughs> it, so I, I, I actually had to slow down to that speed to try and get the, the, the Americans to understand what I was saying. Um, I have I have been accused one of my, my lectures um, here in New Zealand uh, I was taking on a persona, and unfortunately the persona I was taking on, because we were looking at that um, user testing and that empathy stage where you um, build personas and work out what product you're designing, um, and they, they, they accused me of going too much into uh, ASMR. And so I was uh, giving 
very soft and calm. Listen to the lecture as I gently talk you through the point of user testing. So yes, I can I can also do AS ASMR. Um, for me, it's 10 o'clock at night. For you, it's the middle of the day, so you probably don't need to go to sleep. Um, so I'll, I'll, I'll try and just be me. Um, so I, I put examples of, of um, uh, New Zealand next to Norway. So as you can see, we're kind of similar length country when you actually take them at the same um, zoom level. Um, so Norway is a bit longer because you guys go a bit further up around the top there. Um, and also you're much wider in the middle of Norway, with Norway where you guys are. So Norway is just a bit bigger than New Zealand um, overall in size. Um, but, you know, we're, we're similar countries, same population-ish. We're 5 million. You guys are a bit over 5 million. So, yeah, um, we are in lockdown level two. So we're socially distanced currently and you guys are socially distancing. So, you know, it's it's all about the same there. Um, so, yeah, so I'll, I'll um, be taking you through this course. It will be online. Right? I will not be flying to Norway. I will not be coming and visiting you in the lab. Um, so we will have to do a lot of this through Discord and through um, Twitch. Uh, and I'll upload my videos to whatever platform works for you guys. Um, YouTube is one place where we put stuff. Um, if that's a good site for you to, to gain access to this material, that's great. I'll put it up there as, um, as, a, as a store um, for later. Now, just check. Um, so, uh, as you've noticed, you can do live chat over here, um, Arik, or you can Twitch chat me, right? Um, so I will occasionally check the Discord for it. You guys can chat to each other while I'm doing that, um, but I'll come back to this and check it occasionally. But if you jump into the Twitch, then um, that gives me the, you know, Twitch sometimes has that kind of really fast, easy chat mode. Um, and it's kind of designed around around the chat. And because OB, I'm using OBS, um, I've got my my Twitch window just down here. Um, and that's that's actually a, a good place to, to comment at me. Okay, so. Um, so a little introduction. Um, I've been programming for 35 years. So I got my first computer, which was a ZX Spectrum at the age of 10. Um, I... Um, Oh, I see I've got a double up on you there. So um, this is a, a Warcraft, um, Warcraft 2, I believe that particular screenshot is. So I played a bunch of Warcraft when I was a kid, a bunch of these pixel style games. Um, and I also played uh, Dungeons and Dragons. So uh, I started that at the age of, of nine, I started Dungeons and Dragons. So uh, I played a lot of the, the level one through three original version of D&D. Um, and that's... That's a very useful way of, of designing worlds and thinking about being someone who you're not, that, that whole role-playing aspect. Um, and so uh, I found that being a, a player in D&D and, and specifically a dungeon master, a game master in D&D helps you think about rule sets and about how you apply rules and how you create experiences for players, right? So even though it's not digital games, it's very useful to get into the right frame of mind as a game developer. Um, and, you know, I've, I've um, as one of my friends, Lenny, um, we were doing some mocap stuff when I started first teaching my game courses here. Uh, I, uh, when I worked commercially, we were doing um, games in Flash. This was 2007, 2008, when I was working commercially. Uh, I've, I'm having worked commercially uh, and kind of got made redundant a couple of times because of the financial crisis. Uh, I came back to academia, and so I've been lecturing for um, nearly 20 years with a two-year break to be a, a professional game developer in the middle. So, um, welcome back. Simon McCallum, I live in New Zealand. Um, this, is, this game programming course is about taking your programming and sort of putting it all together because you've been doing a whole bunch of individual courses before this, you did the game design course, well, the experience, um, uh, the user experience course um, in first year. Uh, you've you've now got more programming skills, and we're going to, in this go, let's start sort of ramming those back together into making games. And so hopefully this will improve your programming ability. We also want to start you thinking about game-specific programming rather than the more general stuff that often you've been doing. 
Part of the goal is so that you have games that you can show people, particularly companies, that you've made, right? And that you understand and you know the complexity of. Um, <laughs> thank you, Sandra. Um, and uh, this is also a prep for your bachelor of GABA, for your bachelor project. Now, the reason why we, we kind of, I, it seems almost like cheating, is that you get first go round at it, right? Because the first time you do something, you generally make mistakes. And the second time, you're generally significantly better on a whole bunch of stuff. So this gives you the ability to work towards a bachelor size of project without it being your bachelor cup. So it's still smaller, right? It's, it's, it's smaller, but it runs over the same length of time. Um, we also, unlike the bachelor, where you pick your topic and you are graded on the report you write and trying to make, and you try and get the code to do what you need it for the report. In this course, we're more focused on what you learn during the process. And so we're gonna require you to add things to the project which might not be needed in the game you're making, but we're not actually focused on, did you make a good game? In this course, we're interested, did you learn all of the skills that you'll need to go on and make a good project in your Bachelor of Game. Okay, so, so this isn't about the final product, this is about what you learn during the process. Okay, so uh, in this course, we generally have a, a uh, group project, three, four, uh, we have had twos and we have had fives, but we generally expect it to be that three or four size, size group. Uh, over the next three months, from now until December, you'll be making game months in those four months. Um, we want to bring in those aspects from, from the rest of the degree. We'll be looking at some AI stuff, we'll be looking at some multiplayer stuff, potentially some cloud and server side stuff. We'll do some UI and I'll talk about user experience um, and um, you know XR, VR, mixed reality, those kind of interface issues. We'll also bring in some graphics and we'll go, we'll dig more deeply into game engines and how they work. And the focus will be on supporting your learning. Uh, I, so that's that's the kind of group project. As part of that, I want individual reflections. I want you to be thinking about what you are contributing to the group and what you are getting back from that, what you're learning. Um, and I want you to be able to create sort of um, modular and professional quality code. I want, you, I want to encourage you to start thinking about how you communicate with other developers through the code that you write. Uh, I want you to use version control properly, and this will be using Git. Uh, either GitLab or GitHub, we can discuss the pros and cons of the GitLab repo we're using um, on site, or using GitHub, particularly if you're doing Unreal, it's got nice GitHub integration, uh, and also using the issue tracker properly in um, your uh, Git project. Uh, so we actually do smart commits and that we, we look at this development as part of your professional maturing as developers. Okay. So, what are some of the minimum things we're going to do? Because you know this is a, a a course where we have some learning objectives, uh, and I'll just check that we're doing all right here. Twitch, Twitch has way better to quality. Yeah, that so so that's so Twitch does have far better quality, and that's partly because Twitch is coming out at full rate, whereas Discord is coming at the reduced rate. So that because I can't control well. I suppose I could try and control Twitch and get it to go lower and get Discord to go higher, but it's it just gives people different options. If you've got really bad internet, then you want to be on Discord, okay? But if you've got good Twitch, go for it. Um, so the minimum we're going to do is we're going to try and get you to improve your programming. Now, if you're using Unreal, then that will be your C++ programming. So you do kind of have to think, what kind of programmer do I want to be, okay? Do I want to increase my skill on C++? Do I want to increase my skill on C Sharp? Do I want to do stuff in JavaScript or in Android using Java? So you have to think and your group will have to decide exactly which piece of technology you use. You will use version control and I will make you do workflow. Um, we will look at graphics and that means that if you're using a game engine, uh, particularly Unity or Unreal, then yes, I expect at least some of you to be doing some shader um, programming and, so, and creating some, some shaders in your games, right? And uh, I also expect you to understand some of the stuff that's going on with 
with texture maps and bump maps and and um, the kind of you know yeah bump maps to affect the vertex shader um, as well as the fragment shader and look at, at how how those interact in the graphics pipeline as part of a game right so rather than just creating a graphic it's why we would do this in a game and what effect that has uh, we'll be doing uh, I'm quite happy to talk about physics and go into how physics works in games and how games um, have both like game, game physics, not real physics, um, and simulated realistic physics. I can also talk, I, my, my PhD is in AI, so I'm happy to spend an entire um, part of the course just talking about game AI and the different aspects of game AI and how AI is used in games. Uh, and also we'll talk about design patterns and, and architecture of game engines and basically any topic you are interested in beyond these kind of minimum ones, right? So the minimum is to learn to get better program. Um, we want you to better understand, um, uh, yeah, a, a better understanding of game programming problems. So what are the challenges that game programmers face and how are, like, are those unique? Are they similar to other problems? Why do we care about memory allocation and speed and, and um, frame rates? Uh, what, like, how does that make the game better or worse? Uh, the process of game development. Um, we're gonna, I'm gonna teach you writing clear code rather than fast code or short code. Um, I have some issue with the quality of some of the code that uh, the. Um, that some of the students write and that some of our lecturers write. Uh, it might be short or it might be very efficient, but sometimes it's very hard to understand. It's not a great way of communicating between two programmers. So we'll, we'll try and cover some of that. Um, is 3D graphics required? No, 3D graphics is not required. Um, is it implicitly given from the other requirements? Most of the requirements can be achieved in 2D, right? Yes, most of them can be achieved in, in 2D. We do not require you to do 3D graphics. Um, the, the one of the issues of doing 3D graphics is that the, the assets take a lot more time to create because you, the, you see them from multiple angles, whereas the art, a 2D art assets tend to be much faster to create or to acquire online. You can buy big libraries of 2D assets relatively cheaply, or even there are some free libraries out there, uh, and so you can get a lot of really high quality 2D graphics. So you absolutely do not have to do 3D games. However, even with 2D games, you can still look at the graphics pipeline and you can look at how you can use shaders, particularly particle effects in 2D, that are still using the graphics card and dig into kind of understanding the parts of the engine that are interesting. Okay, so, um, so there, that's there. Uh, unfortunately, when I look down, that's where my Twitch stream is, and that's kind of where the rest of the content is, whereas I have to have my camera over this side, so, yeah. Sorry if my, my positioning is wrong. I might have to try and play with flipping the camera at some point just to see if I can get the camera above the Twitch stream. So I, when I look down, you know, I actually look at it. Okay, so um, we're also going to look at networking. So... Um, you don't have to make multiplayer games. However, I will expect you to, even if your the game you make does not have a lot of multiplayer in it, I will expect you to be able to connect to a server and send information back and forth. Potentially use that kind of chat interface, even if just Australian TCP, bring up the socket, connect, make the connection, just so you can do things like save high scores or read configuration files. Right. So I expect you to have integrated some form of networking into your game so that you can demonstrate that ability. Um, we will talk about multi-threading and asynchronous programming. Um, I used to teach an entire course on multi-threading. So if you guys choose to, to kind of really unpack and dig deep into how multi-threading works and, and the kind of agent-based multi-threading that games do and also the particle system um, multiple data, single instruction kind of parallelism. We can also dig into that. Now, as you can see, with physics and the special effects trading, um, there's a lot to learn, right? There's a lot to learn and, and a lot to bring together to make these kind of projects. 
Now, um, that means we're going to have to like actually kind of, you're going to have to be independent. Now, so I got this, I get this slide because um, I'm not sure if, if everybody has read the explicit descriptions of courses in Norway. So um, this is what Nokut says a course has, right? So an A is an excellent performing performance, clearly outstanding. The candidate demonstrates excellent judgment and a high degree of independent thinking. So there's independent there, there's independent there, and there's independent there. All right, so it goes from a high degree of independent to a very good degree of independent thinking to a C, should still degree of judgment and independent thinking in most areas. Now, this suggests that I shouldn't be telling you what to do all the time. Now, um, I'm sorry to upset you, but um, I will not tell you how to get an A in this course because if I tell you to do it, that takes away that top bracket of high degree of independent thinking because if I've told you exactly what to do all the time, that's clearly not a high degree of independent thinking. That is compliant thinking. You are doing what you're told. Um, so... What we're going to do is um, I'm going to hand over more control to you as students. Um, now, normally when I've been teaching in Norway, I would have spent three years working you up to this. Um, now I rely on, on Marish to have, and Marish and Christopher, to have kind of kept that culture of handing control over students. Uh, and so hopefully by now, when we give you some ownership of your learning and some ownership over deciding what you want to learn, when you want to learn it, how you want to learn it, how this works, how much interaction you need from me. And we structure you into your groups and like we start talking about um, working professionally. Uh, you, you will take that lead and you will be independent and you'll get those high grades by taking charge, right? Rather than just by waiting for us to tell you what to do. This is the game programming course. This is hopefully one of the more enjoyable things. Now that you've spent a couple of years learning to be better programmers, you're actually starting to be able to create the things you want to create rather than starting, but rather than constantly being limited by your tools. Okay. So that's, I just thought I'd reinforce those to say that's why I'm going to push you on independence. Um, there is going to be a bunch of, of, of potential technologies that you will have to choose, right? Some of this independence is I, me not telling you exactly what to do, but giving you advice and having that conversation. Uh, so I will actually want you to start forming groups, the groups that you'll work in for the, for the trimester. Uh, if you already have groups and you know who you want to work with, that's great. If you don't have groups, then we need to spend the next few days working out the group that you are going to be in. And then once you're in a group, you have to start working out what it is that you're going to learn. Okay, so um, don't try and do all of these libraries. You get to do like Unity or Unreal. Don't try and do both. That's too much, right? Don't try and do Unity and SDL or SFML or, yeah, this kind of pick a lane and stick to it, right? So, so we have Unity. We're not teaching you Unity this year. Um, so because Unity got crazy with their licenses and they've been all over the place um, and the networking disappeared and now they're coming back, but they've got a whole new pipeline. Unity used to be the, the easy choice. Now it's a bit more challenging because some of the resources no longer work in the latest version of Unity. Um, so, but Unity, if you're looking at doing 2D stuff, Unity has a simpler 2D pipeline than Unreal. Uh, however, Unreal has um, quite a nice integration with C++ and, you, and the Blueprint system is, I think, a, a nice way of programming. So I'm kind of split as to, to either of those two. There are a whole bunch of other engines. You could go the Corona engine, you could go Pixie and you, or Phaser. Um, I've got some students here working in Pixie days. Uh, we have the Talk engine, Godot, um, Godot or Godo. Um, uh, the Ogre engine, you could even go all the way down straight OpenGL and, and try and kind of be crazy and create your own rendering pipeline on top of OpenGL. Right? I wouldn't suggest that, but that's possible. 
Um, there are also libraries, even when you combine those with some of the, the game engine. So down, like if you're going to use OpenGL as a rendering engine, um, then you're going to use a library like um, SDL to, to manage some of the game events or SFML. And you're then going to have to link those with a physics engine and some audio stuff. Um, we also, if, if you want to focus on mobile and say, right, we're going to make a mobile game in this course, then yes, you can use um, Android, which is pretty easy. iOS, yeah, if, if you've got a Mac, you know, it's, that's, it's great, but it's not free to, to post stuff. Um, you do have to pay $25 to post on Android, but you have to pay constantly to be on the iOS engine, so it's not as easy. Um, and uh, there are also VR and AR and, and technology, and certainly on the mobile phone, you could use them with your reality. Uh, one of the challenges, though, as we're facing with uh, level, as we face with social distancing, if you're going to do user testing in, in VR or you require to be in the lab, given that we don't know what's happening over the next three months, we don't know if you'll be allowed in the lab or how often you'll be allowed in the lab or how much time you're going to be able to spend physically together, um, picking VR, ugh, you better have one at home, you better know that you can continue to work even if you are locked down and you're not allowed to see anyone, right? So, so I would be hesitant to go down that route. AR, you should, you probably all have mobile phones, maybe, um, <laughs> and um, you should be able to, to kind of do augmented reality things on your mobile phones. So, so these are the sort of the un, the the, the li low lying technology, even up to the game engine, which we're going to build the games on. Okay. Now, each of these, you can learn to program in, you can program professionally in any one of these tools. You know? They all have the level of complexity required to demonstrate your learning and your ability. Um, they can also make interesting outputs. Right? So it's not the, oh, I won't be able to make a game unless I pick Unity or Unreal. No, no, no. All of these, you can, you can make games. They are just the the type of game you make changes. Okay. So we also look at, at who you might be employed by um, because, you know, this is where, like, this is your second to last semester. Uh, and so what we're doing is we're starting to gear you up to be employable. Now, that's a part of what I'll be doing is not just saying, hey, you, you are definitely going to be game programmers. It is a, you're probably going to be programmers. Um, and so I want, make, I want to make you good programmers and then good game programmers. All right, so good programmers first, good game programmers second. Now, to be a good game programmer, you also have to be a good programmer. All right, so, uh, and, you know, once you've got that player focus and you understand how to manage um, the, the hardware so that it actually does what you want, then all of these, um, all of these um, employers are possibilities. All right, so um, sometimes I will step outside of this is about games to this is about being a good programmer. All right, so there'll be a little, they're, they're, I'll kind of go meter occasionally and say, well, you know, this thing we're doing, oh, do it in games. This other thing we're doing, oh, yeah, that's really valuable across a whole range of industries, okay, to try and make that distinction. Um, as I said, we've got, we do have additional technology. You have got that VR, AR, sort of XR stuff, um, but there are COVID challenges. So uh, we have, of course, smartphones and AR. We've got some vibes and some quests and, there's a whole bunch of GIS data, which would be really interesting for doing AR stuff. Um, there's the of the data. You can get the data from, from Norway. Um, we have a Yuvik ambulance simulator, which is a massive hydraulic um, platform with a full ambulance sitting on top of it, which is linked into LabVIEW, which you can connect to games. And so you could actually build a game inside driving an ambulance where you drive and the platform throws you around and you're potentially either wearing VR or it's playing on the big screen in front of you, right? So there are there are some neat op opportunities. However, as I said, with COVID, a bunch of these are limited this semester. But if you're if you if you have faith that everything will work out lovely, then you can start looking at potentially using some of those. If you're doing AR on the mobile, then AR Core and AR Kit are really good. Apple and um, Oh, Google and Apple have stepped up 
their support for AR a lot in the last couple of years, and so this is now relatively easy to do, and you could kind of make interesting games in that area. Now, it's 10.30. Um, one of the things that I'll be doing differently to potentially most lecturers, I don't know if um, some of your lecturers have, have adopted this in Norway, um, I will be doing an agile um, style of lecturing, which means that I'm willing to change depending on what you want to learn. So instead of having a fixed plan, like a, a waterfall plan, where I define all the topics you're going to learn, and then we step from one topic to the next, all the way through until we get to an exam. Right? Standard waterfall model, I plan it all out, doesn't matter what happens during the project, um, I'm going to force you as students to fit my plan as a lecturer. Okay. That is the waterfall model. The agile model is that you review what you're doing on a regular basis. You put the features that you want to develop into backlogs, and then you groom the backlog and you take out the next feature and you decide in a sprint what the your, your sprint meeting what the next sprint is going to do so you don't actually have a oh we're doing that next week all the way through the entire um, semester all you have is a right this is what we're doing now these are all the things that need to be done these are how big we think they are um we think they might fit in this order but we'll reevaluate it after each couple of weeks just to see that this is in fact is the order that we want to still be doing things in. So what that means is that each week we will throw stuff into the backlog and at the end of the lecture or uh, by a few days in we can do some voting systems uh, and you guys can vote on the topic that you think is the most important. We can also do this with you adding new topics that I've never taught before. Uh, this is a, a somewhat scary thing to do as a lecturer, is where I say, right, you're third year now, you, you may still have some holes. There may have been something in the course that the lecturer wasn't able to cover in time, or there could have been something that you've just seen, you say, okay, um, we've just seen some stuff on the Unreal Engine 5, um, it's got some interesting stuff around the way that it automatically decimates models, We'd like to understand that pipeline. So can we have a session where we discuss the Unreal 5 pipeline? And I might have to say, well, actually, uh, we don't really know how the Unreal 5 pipeline is working yet because they haven't released it. Um, so we're just going to have to go off our best guess. Um, but I will then, we'll go through and we'll start looking at, at what we can extract from the press releases and from the discussions. And, and when we look at those, in, at, at the upcoming um betas what we can extract from from what they're saying they can do so so yes yeah, so the idea here is that each week you will be picking the next topic now there are some things that we have as learning objectives in the course which means there are probably five or six topics right five or six lectures where we're going to have to do those ones now you can keep pushing those back until right at the end of the semester and then i'm going to have to teach them right and you can pick them out when you want to uh, but we will cover those, and that is a bit of um, a bit of AI, a bit of networking, a little bit of physics. Okay, so um, sort of that game up in, engine update loop. So there are a few things that are written into the uh, learning objectives of the course. We will have to cover those, but we will adjust what you learn according to what you need during your your um, projects. Now that means that you can, as a group, or as a collection of groups, right, so you're going to be groups, um, say, oh, we're stuck on this thing, we want to lecture on this thing, right? And if you can convince the other students in the class that that's the lecture you need, that's the lecture I'll give, okay? So so this is adapting to the pain points that you have in your projects, okay? So this is a bit of, well, you know, it's a bit risky for me because I don't know what I'm teaching from week to week. I just have to kind of try and hold it all together in my head. Um, and then when you ask me stuff, that's what we have to go through. Um, now, at the moment, I'm on Discord and Twitch. Uh, I actually have a bunch of my students in New Zealand are also on Twitch. So some of them will have been watching Twitch and may have got a notification that Simon's streaming and been playing their games on a Friday night and gone, oh, I wonder what Simon's talking about. And jumped over and say hello from New Zealand. So um, there may be some other people on the stream. That's fine by me. Um, 
the uh, Discord is is limited to just the class, so so that's a bit more limited. So that should be fine. Um, so if you have uh, questions, you can also like rant at me in my ears through Discord, um, and you can ch Twitch stream and you can chat in the Discord um, to each other um, as well as using. Oh, and I'll get the my there and then there. Um, I'll get the stream back up. Um, so yeah, so. So I'll use Discord and I'll use YouTube to store the videos and I'll use Twitch to stream this and kind of be where you guys might be. Um, we also need to decide timing because, you know, 10 till midnight for me every Friday night would be a bit long. And I pick lunchtime um, for you on Friday. Uh, given that we don't need a room for this course, I figured we wouldn't go at 8 in the morning. Um, I mean... Hopefully you're all awake by eight in the morning, but um, I'm yeah. As a as a general rule, um, more than half the class prefer not to have to try and be awake and up and functional by eight in the morning, uh, and so they're like a little bit of an easier start to the day. Um, so I was looking at the third year level schedule, and it does seem that like I've got all Friday morning, but it does seem like most of your Friday afternoons are wee bit off as well. Um, we can split the session up. We can kind of discuss with you when you want my support, okay? Um, when I can be most effective to help you with your games and to get you moving through them. Um, and so that might mean that, you know, I'll do an hour session on a Wednesday and a two-hour thing on a Friday or something like that, right? So it's about picking, picking those times where you want me to be uh, and the time that fits as a class fits for your schedule. And we can do that online with some um, uh, uh, oh, doodle poll voting and some discord voting and those sort of things, right? So we can, we, can, we can vote on particular options until you guys are happy with the schedule and when I'm giving you feedback. Uh, now, certainly as an agile lecturer, one of the things I do is I say, you know, if you're following the proper agile methodology, you're supposed to have kind of a, a minimal viable product as quickly as possible and every week. I think of that as your knowledge. So your knowledge is my minimal viable product, which means when I add something new to the project, I'm supposed to have integrated it so it now is a whole functional um, um, entity, right? So if it was a program, I'd add a feature and get it working by the end of the next sprint. And then I'd add the next feature and then the next feature. So when we're learning, rather than learning disconnected pieces of information that you can't see how they fit together, given that I'm trying to integrate as I go in an agile methodology, I will try and always connect what we're teaching to what you currently know. Um, I also have um, the, the same concept for agile and bugs, right? Because if I've tried to teach you something, right? So that's a feature I tried to add to the product. And if you don't know it, then that would be a failure. That would be a bug, right? So if there's something that we've covered and you don't understand, you can raise that as a bug and either other developers can help you fix that bug by informing you of what it is, or you escalate it to me and then I try and fix that bug by helping you learn that that piece of information that had been taught. If it's a new a new thing that we haven't covered already, that's not a bug, that's a new feature, okay? So um, these are kind of feature requests and bug fixing. That's how I think of them when we think of agile teaching. Okay, so I'm, I've got some jobs for you to do and I also would like you, I, I see there are about 10 of you on Discord. Nine, nine. Nine on Discord, so hello, nine people out of 30-odd I have in the class. Um, I'm assuming that some people haven't turned up yet um, or that, are, that aren't that are online or they may have gone to the room, they've got lost and they're waiting for this recording to go up. Um, so one of the things we need to do is very quickly start establishing contact, right? So you and me have contact. I've got your emails. I sent your stuff out on, on um, a notification on Blackboard. Um, I will send announcements through Blackboard, so you have so there's that email announcements going out. But what I want you to be able to do is go to the um, IMT three six zero one 
2020-2020 GitLab repo. This is where I plan to use, this is what I plan to use instead of Blackboard, right? As my learning management location. Uh, and in here, I just give you know, a small introduction, it gives you the kind of a few options. Um, I will, I've, I've added to start that the lecturing um, folder, I will add a code folder where I can dump code so that you can look at code and we can discuss code uh, and discuss kind of how different game programming projects work. Um, and so that can be dumped in here. It means that you can pull the entire repo and get all of the lectures and all the code. And if I push something in new, you can just pull it down. Okay, so so this will keep you up to date with the release content will be in here. And you don't have to kind of hunt through and find it. You just pull it and it's there. Um, and in here, I, there is a wiki page. So down here on the wiki. Um, so over there on the wiki. Um, you'll see that uh, we have, um, I've, I've given you group zero, an initial group, which is, now Richard will be giving us, uh, who I ha we have been using as a lecturer for this course um, while I've been in New Zealand for the, for the first couple of years of doing that, um, will come in and give us some guest lectures um, because he's still keen. Uh, so him and I will, I'll be the main kind of contact lecturer, uh, but we might get him in for a couple of guest lectures because he's, um, a very experienced game developer uh, had a lot of Unity experience. Uh, so the idea is that I need you guys to come in here and edit the wiki to create your groups and update this to say which group you're in and what your local Git ID is, right? Because we're not using um, your username as your Git ID because we haven't connected with Theta because of this is you know this is our server rather than the new server. Um, well, ours isn't. Belongs to NTNU, but we run it rather than having central admin run it. Um, we are getting you to register and log into here. So I, what I expect you to be able to do is to go in here and and edit the page and add your um, group number and the at username you have, right? So that we so I can see who people are. Okay. Now I'll also be in here putting in issues right so uh, as you can see here we already have the the introductory lecture is already an issue uh, and so uh, I have a game AI that should probably be uh, an issue so if I go to that I, 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 a lecture issue um, and I will add it over here with labels and I'll make it a lecture okay um, so that gives and you know the idea is that uh, at some point you guys can vote up that you want that lecture to be given um, in voting on the issue uh, and that allows us to prioritize those lectures and you can take your votes on and off um, and so we can groom that and then we can have discussions around how we actually decide um, the the weight and you know if we're going to have multiple game ii lectures we'll create new issues and we'll link them to this overall game AI issue. We could have something about modeling the player or we could have something around enemy AIs um, and uh, cooperating AIs, so, so NPCs that are on your team. Uh, we can have team-based AI discussions. We can look at some, uh, some of the tools for learning how to make game AIs. So, so there's a bunch of topics we could do in here as well. So we can add those as we go. Um, but this gives us an idea of, of um, here. So uh, this has one upvote and one downvote. Someone doesn't like game AI. Huh. Oh, well, okay. Whoever that was voted against it, huh, has now taken that vote against it. Yeah, anyway. Okay. Um, but, you know, so you guys can, can, can vote. Um, it not, it's not important who votes up and down, right? Because that's, that's, it is just trying to get the overall number. Uh, and we can look at what, um, adding in all of those interesting topics into here. And I was going to add those as, as issues. And you can add those as issues as well, right? So the idea is that you get to drive this. So I need you to go into the wiki. I need you to update the wiki so I can see that you're actually engaging, right? Because once you go in here and go to the wiki and update this wiki, um, and at least put in your user account in here. It means that I know that you've been active in the course, right? So this is kind of a, a 
a logging in kind of phase. Uh, and it means that I can also more easily find your link to your repo. And uh, when you want to talk to me, I can jump in there and, and go to your repo. Now, if your repo is private, you will have to hand me the link uh, and then other students won't be able to get your repo because it will be private, but I will be able to because you've authorized me. Okay, so uh, that will also allow me to help you with your repositories and improve your code and give you feedback on your code as you're developing it. Okay, so um, the, the so what I need you to do, the job is to update your group in the wiki and update your name in the wiki. Um, and I should actually update your group in the wiki and update your, your name. I should have written that down there, I haven't yet. Um, actually, I will do that because this is live. I can go update your name and get ID. Start talking to me about your ideas. Okay, so um, <laughs> what we're bang and bang. Okay, so that last bit, start talking to me about your ideas. Okay, so this course, I'm, I'm at a distance. I'm not in the room with you. Right, so it's going to be hard for me to potentially get a feeling for if if you're following along and you're understanding what I'm doing. Um, but um, I'm going to try and um... oh, you're unable to edit the wiki for adding the group. Okay, let's let's fix that right now. See, this is why we need to be interactive, right? This is why I need you you here doing this with me because you know I it's it's um I have to make this able to be edited now either I add you to the group all right so I could actually go members and we can add a whole bunch of people as um a developer um so I have ah right these people have made Request access. So thank you people requesting access. I'll go in here and I can go, um, yeah, we'll make you all developers. That's fine. I can approve, 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 approve. So what do I mean by my your, your Git ID? Um, actually, uh, so as we see here, um, we have Jürgen Alexander Moen Johnson, um, and he is uh, Deirikus, Deirikus? So at Deirikus is, is his name. And so Jürgen is his official bachelor, bachelor name, right? So, so, that's his, um, so that's his official name and then the Git ID. Okay, so that's, oh, hello. Um, well done. So, so you just requested, I've just granted. Oh, and I've got a whole bunch more. Yay, request, request. So you guys have worked out how to request access to it. That's pressed just now. Let's see. Did that get you no? Know, there was yep. So no current active requests. That's great. So um, well, you know, that's a good start. You you've now been been added as developers to our collective teaching environment. So um, you oh, and there are three more. So I can add add whoop, add add. Can it cope with me clicking more than one at a time? It does seem to be able to cope. Okay, so uh, we now have 25 in the group. That's excellent. Um, so this will be our, so the, the wiki is is there. This is a, a, a shared space. I will be putting up code. If you want to put up some code to share, we can put stuff up here together. Uh, we can work as a team so that we learn things together. Okay, so that's why I'm kind of giving you Developer access rather than just saying we give you say guest access. Okay, uh, you can also see that Marius and um, Richard have access to to this because um, we're all part of the sort of the team that this is created under. So um, that's why they also have access. Um, and this is that kind of collaborative space. So now hopefully we'll see some of the wiki. Have we got? Aha, group 13, woohoo. Um, 
So you guys have already put your name in there. It, it would be nice for you to, to, to connect your email address with this. It's just also that I can I can see who to email um, because it's easier sometimes than and then just at it. Okay, so um, I see someone's already went through group 13. That's fine. Um, I was trying to give you an example of how to do it for, for mine uh, and you can add the repo link. We can You can do that if, when you're editing the page. Um, right, so... Um, how to request? Oh, thank you. You found it. Um, top of the project overview. Okay, so we'll just go to members and see if we have another request having come in. Yay! Four more requests. You guys are onto it. That's wonderful. Um, let's see if I can cut all of them before it reloads. Fingers crossed. I got them all. Um, yes. We're now up to 30, yay. Um, now I think there are about 32 in the class in total. Um, so that will be in, in Blackboard somewhere here. Um, so Blackboard. Fair login. I'm not gonna show you my password, yay. Um, so, so I think there are about 30 in the course, um, 35 in the course. Now, so if you already know the group that you want to work in, that's fine. But over the next short while, um, okay, I'll... Huh. Um, okay, um, over the next short while, we'll, we'll um, start putting you into groups. As I said, you'll need to talk to me about um, like how how I generally do groups is I look at, at how we get a combination of people who want to do a project in a similar area, 2D, 3D, a game of specific type. Um, I'm just trying to work out why my dash lane is not responding. Ah, there we go, dash lane. That's better. Give me my login. I don't like trying to remember all my logins, so I use dash lane as my password manager. Um, you know, it's good practice to have password manager. Um, so if we have a look at here, we have, um, I, I'm, I'm not really going to use Blackboard very much. I will put in announcements. Um, as I said, it's a good place for, for emailing everybody in the course. Uh, and I will also look at the, if we, we can look at users. We might, we could do some voting in Blackboard and there are a bunch of interesting things to do in Blackboard. But if I have a look here, we're 37, and we've got Marish and I at least as two lecturers. So we're three with Dipti at least. So that would be 30, yeah, so there'd be 35 students. So we're most of the way there with getting you guys in and on board, I'm, I'm quite pleased that we've got nearly 30 of you having requested. There's an, the last two, excellent. Um, we'll add you two in. Um, oh. Nick, so that's great, so we're now up to 32, so that with me and Richard, so that's 30 of those 35. So that's a good number who've actually turned up for the first lecture. Excellent. Um, now, I'll just check the Discord. Ah, um, right, so, so yeah, so, There'll be people who aren't part of the groups yet, uh, and that's that's obvious. And uh, what we then do is over the next, like you know, a few days, right? So I'll I'll, we can, I'll, I'll start sending some emails out, and we can start con connecting. But you should start connecting, and we'll we'll during the beginning of next week, uh, we will look at some of the projects that you're interested in doing. Start forming those teams around project ideas and around. Um, skills okay so what we'll do is we'll, we'll try and form those teams uh so that we can actually get you together um and you know we may have some international students in here as well so it's useful to try and tie them in with the group as well so so um rather than just say well i'm definitely going to um to jump on and um, make all the groups randomly myself right now uh what we'll do is we'll wait until you guys can form some groups but i will work with you and we'll send out a uh, a sheet, I'll send out a sheet um, asking you what kind of games you're interested in, some of your background, and then we can start using that and we can start seeing each other's skill matrix 
uh, and start working out what kind of group you want to form. Uh, and if we can put in potentially some ideas into the wiki uh, for what some games could be, then that can be a good way to start forming those teams because we really want to get those done basically by the end of next week. Um, I, w I want those teams finalized, right? Because I want you guys to start being able to move forward and start um, using the tools and start actively learning. Now, as, as this is the first time we're doing this and um, I'm, well, first time you guys are doing an Agile course, um, rather than go straight from scratch, if we go to the schedule, um, so as you see, I've got the schedule as a readme in the um, lectures um, folder. Uh, so I've already uploaded the, the lecture I, um, I've been given. I've uploaded that PDF. Oh, didn't actually need to click on it. Um, and the schedule suggests talking about game engine architecture next week, right? So that is that would be the thing I would normally think about talking about for you to do that overview of how a game engine works and all the parts of it and how they and how those components interact. Um, now I'm I know I'm willing to do something else next week, but that would be the one I would default to at this stage. And then we can put in all those other topics and start actually kind of working out as a group which ones to choose. If you don't tell me what to choose, I will just choose the one that I think is the most exciting and interesting to do next, right? But but realistically that's not doing kind of the, the the main job which is supporting your learning okay so um i've used an hour of my time doing that um i see microsoft store is wanting me to do roblox stuff um so i've used up an hour of your your friday so far uh now i know that we in, in theory schedule four hours for you to do stuff every week in this course um it's a bit long for me to be online for four hours and expect you all to be online for four hours. I So I'm not going to try and do a one four-hour block. I think that's unrealistic and unnecessary. Um, I still think you should allocate a bunch of time to this course. But my thought is that I, I also have a whole bunch of video content and, and, and activities for you to do and learning for you to do and your requesting of input from me is where I will kind of give you a lecture on things that are ex exciting and interesting and try and motivate you to keep moving uh, and give you feedback on your projects. Um, right, so so we have, yep, another one saying he's, he's interested in doing Unity 3D. Uh, and do we have anyone over here who's in the, now oh, that's great, you just, that's all good. Um, so, so I see you've started to, do, to, to, to come together. Okay, so, I suppose at this stage, I would ask, do you have questions about the course? What are the questions? So I mean, one of the standard questions is how we graded and what does the end project look like? Well, um, technically, uh, if we're doing Agile, what we do is we negotiate that in the first couple of weeks of the course, exactly what that final assessment will look like. Now. I have an idea of what I would see in a final assessment, uh, and we can certainly share that with you. Um, the course as it stands has a single portfolio assessment at the end. Um, that couldn't, it does include uh, presentations of the games that you do. Um, but the focus is on that learning as the way we go through. So the idea is we'll put groups, you'll make a game, by the end you'll present your game and your documentation. Uh, and I expect your documentation to be the evidence of your learning as well. Uh, in the repo, there will be, in the repo you create for the game, there will be readmes, which are your reflection on your learning during the semester. Right? And that's where you can talk about what you've contributed, um, the most challenging aspects of the course for you, uh, what you, yeah, what you struggled with and what you learned from that struggle. Uh, as well as, you know, your teammates and how they worked. And so all of that reflection and all of that, that process that will help you learn, all of that will be revealed as we go through the course and will be part of that assessment at the end. Um, and so I, that's why I say you must have a repo and you must document in the repo. I'm not expecting a separate report. I'm not expecting, you know, a, a, a big, long thesis, right? That's next. Yeah. Um, yeah, well, next semester. 
that's where you write the big report. This is you learning to program, right? As a game programmer at this professional level in game engines. Okay. So, um, I thought I would just do a, a quick first week intro rather than go deep into the game engine architecture right now. Um, if you're all happy with game engine architecture as the, the next topic, then I will leave that in. But what we'll do is we'll send you um, a uh, form saying, you know, what are you interested in? And also we can put, if you go into the um, GitLab now, uh, you have the ability to uh, create new issues. So as developers, you can um, start putting in issues um, and, if, um, and, oh, Aha, so Jonas, you've already put an issue in. Excellent. Um, so yeah, the idea is that we can we can create issues, I can we can groom the backlog, we can close issues and open issues, and we can vote on issues and, and do those sort of things, right? And so this becomes part of our area um, to do that. And uh, we can also um, look at, as I said, we'll send out some forms, we'll work with you to, to form those groups over the next week. Uh, the the job is to start thinking about what game you want to learn and what game you want to make and what you want to learn while making that game. Okay, so I saw people had already decided talking about, you know, they want to prefer to work in Unity, um, prefer to do a 3D game, so game engine type of game. Um, I may even have genre of game, so we'll put in that, so we can we can put in that whether you want to do RTS or a shooting first person shooter game. Uh, we can put those kind of as styles of what you want to learn. Remember that this pro this course is not about the final product. It's not about that game. It is about learning the tools that will help you make your thesis game. All right? So so don't get too hung up on the oh I want to make my dream ga game. Right now we we know we know from the experience. The first game you make is pretty shit, right? Now, I will know you've already made games in your first year. Um, and so the, the best thing to do is save your really good idea for one of your later implementations, right? Because you know your first ones are going to be a bit shit. So if you take your really good idea and cobble it with a shit implementation, it's going to be a shit game, right? So, so to some extent, you might want to hold off your amazing game idea until you've developed your skills enough to actually do it credit. Okay, so um, don't feel like you have to try and make your, your dream game in this course. That can be later. You are still trying to learn tools. You want to make a game you're engaged in, something that you enjoy, so it will motivate you to keep going, but it has doesn't have to be itself the best game in the world, or even a tribute game to the best game in the world. Okay. So, um, do you have any questions? I've got Discord there, I've got Twitch up. Guys, have any questions on either platform? Ha, ah, okay, found it, thanks. Uh, how is GDPR regarding real names on a public stream? So, in terms of real names and GDPR in a public stream, so, in terms of data handling, right? So GDPR talks about data handling. Um, in terms of revealing real names, um, it's not specifically dealing with privacy of real names on a public stream. Um, that's not part of our processing of your data. Um, it is also, you know, this is, you know that Twitch is a public stream. Um, in terms of real names, the the Twitch stream are, are not real names. Yes, you've seen that there are names in here. Um, and so, yes, there is um, potential for that to be um, a, that people could see some email addresses. Uh, those were email addresses which are your NTNU standard email address. So uh, not necessarily private. Um, there is, you know, yeah. Um, you, you could argue that there is a uh, potential for a breach in privacy of the people who are doing this course because it may have been seen that they are um, doing the course. 
I would not consider it a significant breach of privacy. It's also not a breach of, of my handling of your data in the sense that it's not that we have connected any grades to anything or any private data that is, is sensitive, right? Now, um, in terms of, of uh, GDPR, in general, yes, yes, if, if you were specifically upset by some of that, then yes, we can we can switch out some of the ways that I do this. Um, we can move into the private Discord only channel uh, and we can move more and more private. Uh, it is, it is um, something that we can agree on. Uh, this is a, I, my preference is to do this, inform, this information in, in public. Um, I would generally limit the um, the number. I mean, I'm not going to go back to to, to Blackboard very often, so I doubt that there that there is a going to be a significant leak of data. And certainly, the the really sensitive information is more actually around um, grades or progress or or private emails or um, or private details. So so those are things that I will generally try and avoid um, sharing um, as best I can. Um, and it is a public forum. Uh, however, a lot of university activity is done in public. And so uh, the fact that you, would, uh, you are studying at university is not considered generally private because the universities are a public organization. So yeah, I'm, I'm, you know, if, if, if you'd like to lodge a GDPR complaint, I'm, that, that's okay. Um, go for it. We'll see, we can see how that goes. Um, I would prefer you didn't, but if you feel that we've breached something, tell me and I'll try and fix it. Um, in terms of, of posting things to public information, um, the part of the reason to use Twitch here um, and to, I, I share my name, certainly. Uh, and as, as students, if you don't want to share your real name in the GitLab repo, we can have, you can register with a different name if that's what you really want. Okay, so um, just, I know I, I am aware of these issues, uh, and I don't want to share stuff that you guys are uncomfortable sharing. Uh, but it's, you know, we are, we are doing this transparently and in public. Um, I, I will not share any grades publicly. So, um, that's, that's usually the bit people actually worry about rather than someone saw that I am doing this course. Okay. So, um, we can have a whole lecture on GDPR if you would like me to give you a lecture on GDPR and the requirements of GDPR and understanding GDPR. Um, the intent of GDPR is more around sensitive data. Um, it can protect any data uh, and it is the right to be forgotten. And so, you know, the right to, to remove from, from data from databases uh, and it's to discourage data breaches. But those are usually what we consider information such as your grades are considered sensitive. Um, but yeah, we can we can do a whole lecture on the GDPR as well. I, I've, I've done lectures on GDPR previously and uh, we've, I've gone through the, the legislation. So uh, getting that balance right is, is important, um, though it's not that GDPR prevents you doing everything it just means that you have to be aware of what you're doing and that people know when they're in a public space that they're in a public space so actually gdpr so <laughs> as the comment in twitch there's good to put that in as an issue in the gitlab because part of the requirements of gdpr is that you have discussions about gdpr right so it, it's not that you you I mean, and so it's not just a an end tick that you do at the end. You also have to show, and um, if you get audited, you have to show that you've had discussions about how you're going to handle data. Okay. Now, um, because both Discord and um, Twitch are more public um, than the completely locked down systems, uh, we won't. I won't be sharing grades through Discord. I won't post grades to Discord and I won't post, certainly won't post grades to Twitch or anything like that. Um, so so if those systems disappear, we will do things through um, the GitLab and through um, Blackboard uh, because those are logged and we've, um, we've got 
people have to log in and I have to approve them. So so those will be, and I won't share grades through the GitLab either because that's public to the smaller group of the people in this um, course. The the grades will come through Blackboard and um, they, yeah, so uh, if, uh, well, that Blackboard slash Inspira. So Inspira is where we do the final assessment for the course. So yeah, well, we can manage all that. And certainly putting in as GitLab issues is good. Um, so the GitLab issues can be all sorts of issues. Um, and so that's why I've here, I've tagged these two as lectures, um, as, as these will be things that I can get lectures around. If there are other topics that people want to raise, and um, I don't know, oh, some people have done some of it. So if we create a, a GDPR, that could end up being a lecture, but so I should really make this into a lecture. Um, but it could also be a um, labels and picture. Right. Um, so, oh no, not close. Oops, we open. Sorry. <laughs> I meant to close the window. Um, okay, so that's that's turned that into um, a lecture. Oh, it should have turned it into a lecture. There we go. Um, so yeah, so you can put other issues in here. You know, if you put stuff that doesn't seem relevant, then, you know, we could groom it out and close it. Um, but you can also put comments in next to, to issues that are raised. Okay. Um, totally off topic, but as a Kiwi, have you been following the um, development of Path of Exile? Break. Ah, break. It's already an hour. Um, I was actually going to have a break as an, as, as, and, and actually, so, so there isn't, I wasn't going to give you more formal lecturing content today. So it was just kind of an intro and start chatting with you, making sure you understood what's here and start thinking about what it is like creating those members. So I wasn't going to have a long break. Um, so Path of Exile. Yeah, no, I, I've, I'm, so I think two or three of the founding um, developers at Path of Exile were in my first game course that I taught in 2004. So they are my students who, who are actually up in Auckland doing Path of Exile. So yes, I have followed my, my former students and they are, yeah, no, they're cool. They're cool guys. So, um, right. So um, the wiki is is where you want things to, to be. So, you know, if you if you want an introduction to to some of the Path of Beat guys, I can I can, you know, try and get them to um all right, so yep, yeah, people are doing stuff in there. In the wiki down here, you'll see people are putting in their their um user codes and student IDs and well it's not student ID. It's not student ID, it's the email address and their GitLab repo. Okay. So um so yeah, um, what about automation? Uh, do you mean you mean automation as in tools for DevOps, or do you mean um, uh, well? So automation. I'm assuming you mean sort of the CI/CD stuff. So you're talking about that kind of continuous integration. Oh, you mean automation games, right? So. Um, uh, Yes, oh, what am I? actually, I'm not sure which ones they are. I, I may have students in that group. Um, okay, so where I want you to do it is in the wiki page, right? So if you go down here and you hit the wiki page, uh, that's where these are, and that's where you can put in your, your details, and that's how I know when, yeah, who, who's who's in what group and what, and that they've interacted. Um and that was the last person who did that. So, um, right. Right, no, I haven't, I haven't been following those though. My, my good friend Jason will know all about those because he follows all of the, the, um, yeah, any, any vehicle game he, he, is on top of, so he knows all about that. Okay, so my thought was to, to actually let you guys go now uh, and actually give you a break. Um, 
So, uh, where do, so I think that was a question that was in the Twitch stream, which was, um, where did you want us to put our repos? So, where, uh, and you've asked here, is Bitbucket, you can use our internal GitLab, you can use Bitbucket or GitHub or GitLab.com. Uh, I don't mind where your repos are for these projects. You, If you put them somewhere other than our GitLab, um, instance, then you'll have to give me access. Now, uh, you can generally find me as simon.mccallum at most things. So, and if you need my email address, simon.mccallum at gmail.com. So, simon.mccallum gmail.com. That should find me. That's what I am in GitHub and I think in GitLab and at Bitbucket, probably that as well. So, yeah. So, um, you if you can add, so, so add me to your project so I can see it. Uh, and then, you know, we might have to add some markers to it later in the course. I don't, uh, yeah, I, I, I don't know if um, automation is, is um, a New Zealand company. I'll have to look it up. I, I, I may well have some former students there now as well. Okay. Any last questions? I know some, I know people are, are having, having spent an hour listening to me. Ooh. Yeah, um, hour and a quarter. Uh, it's probably your limit. Um, so I'll I'll let you go for the moment, but it's good. I'll I'll start. I will send you out on Blackboard a request for the things that you're interested in. So I see that your yeah, game engineer you're interested in the genre, the perspective, and also some some queries about your background. We can build up that um, table of expertise, and then we can start forming those groups during each week. And people have already formed their own groups. That's cool. You guys obviously have got an idea of who you want to work with already. Um, and you've already got an idea of potentially what sort of game you want to start making. And so if you are in a group now, that's your job is to start thinking about what technology you want to learn and what game you want to make. Okay. Um, So um, the group, the, the link to the group repo is what I'd be looking for in the, the wiki. And that link just has to occur at some point. It doesn't have to be out to today, right? It just has, like once, once you've formed your group and once you've got, you've made that decision, then you can put the link in there. And you only have to approve me, so you, unless you're doing it as a public repo, which you can do, right? There's no reason not to do it as a public repo. Okay, any last questions? I mean, yeah, I mean, it's now kind of 20 past 11, so I should probably be heading to bed soon. Um, but uh, I'll be on Discord. You can ping me there. Um, I'll also, you know, if you want to watch me lecture in New Zealand in the middle of the night in Norway, um, so if you know, you, you might be up in the middle of the night, um, then I'll also be Twitch streaming uh, my New Zealand lectures. Um, they're also a third third year game programming course, but because it's their first game programming course, they've had no game design or anything like that beforehand. It might be a bit simpler than the stuff I'm talking to you guys about. So, you know, yeah. Um, but you're welcome to, to, to see what I do there. Uh, and ping me on email. And uh, if you at me in the um, repo, it'll also email me saying, hey, you've been tagged on this issue. So you can also do those sort of things to try and get my attention. Uh, and we can start designing those um, those projects and also designing the lectures to make sure that they're aligned with what you guys want. Okay. If there are no further questions, I'll just let you see if there's anything. I will pause, I'll save, I'll upload this video to the GTL and I'll keep it as, a, as an unlisted video if you prefer that. Uh, and then we can put that on a link from the GitLab to the YouTube unlisted so that you can go and find the video if you want to watch, potentially because you weren't here at this time. Okay. Any other questions? No? It's looking, that's looking good? Cool. Well, um, I normally what I'd do is I would have gone through with each of you introducing yourself and saying who you are and why you're doing the course and what you're interested in achieving. Um, rather than put you on the spot right now and rather than do that in Twitch, I'll probably do that 
individually with you on Discord, and so we can chat there where you're not having to necessarily broadcast to the world your opinions. So, so we'll um, I will I will do that over the next few days, like next week. We can have some chats, um, probably in the in either the mornings or the evenings for you. Uh, if you're happy with me chatting with you on an evening, um, I'll I'll pop into the uh, lecture feedback area here, and you guys can chat to me there, uh, and we can kind of catch up, and you can and and introduce yourself, and I can learn who you are, so that we can make sure that the the course meets your needs. Okay, well, have a good night, have a good Friday, good luck with COVID. Um, you guys seem to have had a, a little bit of a spike in Norway. We've had a little bit of a spike. Fingers crossed that the second wave is only a few days, and then we're we're in the clear again. But um, yeah, I'll see you online and hope you have a great weekend.